When your Titan table is full of parts and you view it in simulation, you may see where a tool runs into another part. Sometimes you can edit a lead in or a lead out to make it work. Today, in Did You Know With Dan, I'll show you how. Sometimes, after moving the parts onto the table and applying your styles, you may notice that the lead in and outs of the tools may be too close to another part. And we can edit those leads even after the toolpaths are applied. In this layout, there are a couple examples of issues that we can correct. Here we see a few lead in and outs that are too close or crossing the dotted line of our table template, which could cause an over travel alarm out at the machine. And here we have an area that the lead in and out might run into another part. We might be able to see this in simulation if the drawing of our tool is correct in AlphaCam. We won't need to move the part to resolve this issue. We can simply change the location of the lead in and lead out because the rest of the part is within the table template's boundaries. So I'm going to change the current location to a new location in this area. So I'll go change that start point in the tool direction, using the same settings as before, outside, clockwise, and manual. Now I'll select my new start point by clicking on it. The easiest way to change the leads to that new location is to update the toolpaths. Here in operations, we should see some toolpaths change to a blue color with the asterisk or star in front of them. This is showing that the geometry has changed. And when we choose Update Toolpaths, we'll see that they get reapplied, and our new start point is taken into effect. Another area of concern was the right side of this part. Here, the leads are going to or past the boundaries of our table template. This could risk getting a machine over travel alarm. So I'm going to move this part over to the left a bit. I find it the easiest to only select the geometries to be moved, which I'll do by making sure that I have all geometries selected, even if I may grab a toolpath or two. Because if I do, I can easily choose to select only the geometries. And then I'll click and slide this piece over a little to the left. And we should see that we have the option to update the toolpaths again. After moving that part, I may have created another area of concern. This tool could be coming out too close to this part. The only way I'll know for sure is if I know an accurate size and shape of the tool. If I look at that tool in my tool library, I can see that the diameter listed is 3.345. And this is the largest diameter of that set of seven. That diameter came from the drawing of the tool when you entered it into AlphaCam's tool library. There are a few things we'll need to know when referencing this tool. First of all, this is the center line of the tool and what we see displayed as a toolpath, which is offset away from the part by the tool's small radius. We also must think about the large radius of this type of a tool never wanting it even close to touching another part while it's cutting one. Here I drew two circles representing the small and large diameter of my bullnose tool. I don't have any concerns that it's going to touch the part next to it. If I move this tool to the area by the lead-in and lead-outs, I am concerned how close it is to the other part. I'm going to slide this whole part up so the leads will also be within the boundaries of the table template. And I'll make sure that I at least select all my geometry to be moved up a bit. And now I'll reassign the toolpaths to my geometry by updating them. And the leads look much better. Next I'll take a look at the leads on my flats and seams that use my Z wheels. These tools can be represented with one circle. 
I'm going to change the angles of my lead in and lead outs with the icon on my machine tab. I'll start by changing the two tool paths on my flat polish. For this first example, I'll use the manual method and I'll set the lead in to both and the lead out to both. Then as prompted, I'll choose a tool path to edit. And I first choose a start position for the lead in. And now I have to choose a new position for the lead out because I have it selected in the edit screen. Do not right click to finish at this time or you will just cancel your lead out. And the tool will raise at the end of the tool path which could damage your material, your tool, and your machine. I'll select this toolpath again to edit it properly and pick a location for my lead in and then also pick a location for my lead out. And I'll do this with the other toolpath as well. Make sure when you're choosing a location that you leave it long enough so that the arc and line are tangential and not kinked as shown. This could cause cutter compensation alarms at the machine. So I'll select the toolpath again to pull the leads out into a proper location. It looks like I only need to change the lead out on this toolpath. The lead in is fine. So I'll select no change for the lead in. And this time when I select toolpaths, I will only be prompted to change the lead out. I'll use this manual method to change the other toolpaths as well. I'll have to adjust the settings accordingly. In this case, the lead ins and not the lead outs. There are eight tools total on this bullnosed edge. So I'm going to use the auto method to change them all at once. I want to change both the line and arc of the lead ins, and I don't need to change the lead out. I'll use my standard 1.5 settings for my line and arc, but I'll choose a very gradual angle for my lead in. So I'll use a low number maybe 15 and then I can choose all the tool paths at once so they all change the same and when your changes are completed you can close out of the editor so you can review and post your program as normal thank you for watching now you know what I know one more thing did you know that we have hundreds of resources available on our website for machine training and service to find them, go to parkindustries.com. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.